okay, right, very good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So you're welcome now this evening to the Sacred Heart Church here in Temple Moor for the celebration of our funeral mass or Pat. We gather to welcome him home to Temple Moor and to Almighty God today and to join with you his family in prayer, sympathy and friendship at this sad time after the blessing of God to him for the fullness of years. So to you, his daughter Rosemary, to his sons Gerald and Paul, he express our deepest sympathy, and also to his son Jimmy, whom we keep in our prayers, who cannot be with us, but whom we pray for and remember at this time especially. And also his daughters in law Caroline, Una, and Anne, and son in law William, and to you, his grandchildren here today, and family members, we welcome you and pray with you in friendship, sympathy, and loss. And we keep in mind, mind his dear wife, Mary, God home to God before him, and all the seats of the Clark family, as he is the last of his generation. So we come into a holy place to do something's prayer for a spiritual holy that marked Pat's life in his own faith and devotion and prayer. And from here, here, the seeds of that faith were sown and nurtured by his late parents and the community of faith that he grew up with here in the Temple Moor in years past. And he held on to that witness and strength of faith. We pray now his reward richly for it, as God is kind to bless him in the fullness of years. So Lord, bless us now as we prepare to offer and celebrate his funeral mass and grant us pardon and mercy for our sin. So now the symbols will be placed. So Mariella, you will step out and go over to the animal and then you'll call out and whoever's leading him up to put him on the little table there, please. Thank you. Una will bring up one of Patrick's ties, which resembles his work throughout his life and his love for good fashion. He always looked so dapper. Grace will bring up an apple, resembling Patrick's love for his apple tree and the pride he had when handing out his apples. He was never too shy to accept a freshly baked apple tart in return. Caroline will bring up Patrick's harmonica, resembling his love for a song and a dance. If you were lucky, he'd play you a happy birthday, followed by Oh and the Saints in swing time. On request only, of course. He was never one for remembering birthdays. Emma will bring up a pack of playing cards resembling Pat's love for a game of 25s, especially if there was a few quid on the table. He'd never let Julian either. Thank you, Mariella, and all of you who have brought up the various symbols. And these symbols give an insight into the character and the person of Pat. And there is much more in the heart of the man that God knows and that you know. And we ask him today to receive all of that graciously, as he does. For he has taught us in John's Gospel, I wish to lose nothing of that which I have created. And the hallmark of God's creation is man, woman and child, each one of us created in his image and likeness, giving us intellect, reason and will. And why would you wish to lose that then, having created us his image and likeness, but to bring us back to himself? So we pray that grace and blessing to Pat today, to be brought safely home, to the kingdom of God, and to be at peace and to rejoice in the happiness of that eternal home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we welcome those who listen in today through the radio link to the parish church and the live stream, the webcam, and all associates with you, his family members today, who may be listening in and watching from the news and where the TLC uh, home where he was cared for, or other places or members of extended family, we welcome all of you who do so in friendship, prayer, sympathy, and solidarity with the bereaved today. So grant us, Lord, your blessing then as we offer the sacred mysteries together. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you because you are merciful to the sinner. Be merciful to each one of us and grant that same mercy and pardon now to Pat. Lord, have mercy. You tell us for the good shepherd that you love us eternally, 
you care for us, and you wish to use nothing of what you have created. Bring all the goodness of Pat's life now to full fruition and completion in your divine presence for all eternity. Christ have mercy. And you are the way, the truth, and the life, the resurrection of the life, the hope of our eternal glory, the destiny that awaits each one of us. Prepare our hearts for it, never to lose sight of that final call and to be someday, sometime ready. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of endless ages, from one generation to the next, you have been our refuge and our strength. Before the mountains were born or the earth came to be, you are our God. Have mercy now on your servant Pat, whose long life was spent in your service and that of his family and his work and in devotion to you. Give him a place in your kingdom where hope is still for all who love and rest assured for all who serve. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So now William and Vincent can come up together for the two readings and sit down together there in the chair. And Rosemary, you may come because you're going to read the psalm. We can put out another chair for you and you'll be there together to read and to come down together. The responsorial psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures, for he gives me repose. Near us for, near us for waters, he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is no fear. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you will have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Second reading. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and no longer was there any sea. I saw the new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down from God, out of heaven, adorned as a bride prepared for her husband. A loud voice from the throne. Here is the dwelling of God among mortals. He will pitch his tent among them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There should be no more death or mourning, crying out for pain, for the world that was has passed away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
stand out of the gospel reading. Alleluia. So again, you are welcome now to the House of God here at the Second Heart Church in Temple Moor for the final farewell and celebration of funeral master Patrick Clark, Pat Clark, as you're familiarly known, the new St. Lady here of Patrick Street. And we have one representative from Patrick Street here in the House of God this afternoon down there at the back, Sean Gray. I'm sure Pat was reared among and friends and neighbours of the Gray family in Patrick Street and Sean's late brother Eddie. I think he was a good friend that I went to school with, so it's nice that Sean is here today to represent Patrick Street and represent, I suppose, so many of Pat's generation who have gone home to God at this stage. So, um, you and I, with each one of you then today, here present, as I said already, with your daughter Rosemary and sons uh, Gerard and Paul, and keeping Jimmy in our prayer at this time, and with you, the extended family today, his grandchildren. And with all of you who may be sitting and pray with us, we thank you and we pray with you and for you. There is truly today a twofold coming home to Temple Moor for Pat Clark. There is a return to his native place where he was born and reared in this, um, and to this house of God, the Sacred Heart Church, where he was uh, baptised and where later now he will be buried in the family plot and buried around with his late parents. And there's also the second homecoming, which is the homecoming to God himself, marking the closure of his earthly life after a fullness of years, of 98 years, and also marking the beginning of the new life with God, which was promised to him in the wars of baptism and in the Christian life that he lived. And as you know, um, Pat was born on the 1st of July, 1923, to James Clark and Margaret Stilton. He was baptised with Father O'Neill, the curate here at the time, and uh, he, he was baptised on the 4th of July by Father O'Neill, which is tomorrow. So tomorrow marks the anniversary of his baptism, and the day of his death marked his own birthday. And he sponsors well on the day of his baptism Tobias Stableton and Lena Ryan. And then later on in life, on the 3rd of November 1954, in the Church of the Visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, in Fairview in Dublin, he married his hero and sweetheart, Mary Dorman. 
And I know that Mary is there to rest in Class 11, and just perhaps wish to come home to his native place and be there to rest with his parents. But God bless he and Mary and their children, and in their children's children, of his grandchildren, and in that blessing of life and years shared together, that were great years and good years, I have no doubt. So, in coming together here today to this house of God and of prayer, this twofold homecoming, you accompany your dear father and grandfather today on his return journey. And you recall, I suppose, among yourselves a past and time shared and celebrated with happy memory that will always live in your hearts through the years to come as a father, a grandfather, as a carer and provider, and all of the lovely symbols that express something of the deeper character and beauty of his heart, of interest in life and in his style, and whether it is the apple and the apple tart, whether it's the dance of the song, all the things that made a difference where he was and who he was with, and leaves a rich legacy of memory of beautiful memory and of happy memory. And no doubt in your formative years he was a blessing and strength to you with his late wife, your dear mother, and a very precious link of, I suppose, time in history has spanned through his years, if you recall, 98 years of life, and of all that has happened in church and state in our own country since his coming into the world, coming in shortly after the town hall had been burnt down here in 1920, later burning up at that time to the creameries and Oakley around and all of that was happening to the Black and Tans at that time, and the burning to of the beautiful Cardinal's family home, Cardinal estate. So he came into an island that was very troubled at that time and lived then through so much of the Second World War, time of great emigration time of suppression in different ways, times of great poverty when the people of Temple Moor and the country had little and saw, I suppose, much of that in the early years of formation. And so many left our country in the boat to other lands and through it as well he saw the great coming of electrical, uh, um, electricity into the country, the water on tap, and all the things of modern times that we take for granted every day that were part of his life in the early years, coming from a very different existence, lifestyle, and a country that was very um, broken and poverty-stricken, coming from its oppression and trying to build itself up and come on its feet. And then coming into the age and time when, at the press of a button now, you can have the world in the palm of your hand, and the tablet or the computer or the um, mobile, all these things that at another time are foreign to all of us and especially to Pat throughout his life. So it is today with respect and with great gratitude and also with a sense of sorrow, I'm sure, in your hearts that you paid this final parting to him. For death has come and now we commend his soul to Almighty God. We return the gift of his life to Almighty God today with great gratitude, respect, and with thanksgiving to God for the fullness of years bestowed to him. And I understand that during his life, and here in Temple Moor, down in Patrick Street, in the uh, Shamrock Store, uh, in Patrick Street, Pat himself was a man who was part and parcel of the life of the community. He was on the county, Tipperary County minor hurling team. He was to be found always at the dance hall and the cinema. And then his work took him later to Dublin, where I suppose most of his great life was spent there, where he met, as I said, his wife Mary, and he set up the Tara Thai Company, and where he provided for his children, put them on their feet, and also loved his five grandchildren, and in so many ways was special and dear to them. And had that nice, pleasant, easy, charming character that endeared him to others. I read some of the condolences, and especially from uh, neighbours and friends of the family who knew who was spoken, everyone mentioned him as a gentleman of gentle nature, a pleasure to know. And the TLC in the news where he was the past 12 months spoke of him in the same way and that he loved to take a dance floor and enjoy the lovely happy social occasions that took place there. So he had a lovely blend of that personality to engage with others, to share the joyful happy moments 
and to celebrate the good things of life, even at that great age of life, when God blessed him with the fullness of years. So there has to be today a great gratitude in your hearts to God that he was blessed with that long life and that you could be part and parcel with him always and in the last 12 months or so that he had great love and care from the TLC in the youth and where they looked after him, where he was happy and where he leaves a rich memory to so many because of the kindness and goodness of his character, personality and the man he was. In the first reading he proclaimed for us there today, by William it said to us about the homecoming from Isaiah in the eternal kingdom. The welcome that we shall receive that shall be generous and plentiful. The great banquet, it said, of rich food and fine wines. A beautiful celebration to be thankful for and to be privileged to share. In other words, we're saying, a rich spread of choice wine and food is laid out for us by the Father in heaven. In other words, he's saying to those who arrive like Pat, well done, good and faithful servant, enter the joy of your Father's house. In other words, he's saying, come in and be at home. You are most welcome. The struggle is over, the tears are over, death is over. Now there is complete happiness to be in the company of Jesus, to exalt in the God who has saved you, the one in whom you hope for salvation and prayed to through all the years. And the second reading proclaimed by Vincent carried out that same theme also of, as the first reading, uh, reminding us again of the blessing in the eternal city, the Holy Jerusalem, where God himself will be with there as their God for them. So it's in that rich treasury of our Christian faith today that we realize and know death is not the end. And that this is the hope we carry every day, the hope that Pat carried through all his long years. A hope that gives us strength for each new day and enables us to put the best foot forward. So this appreciation of God's divine promise through faith must give an inner security and strength to our own selves, to our faith journey, and it must help us also on the journey of life to bring us consolation at the time of parting to bring us joy in the struggle and blessing of life each day, that we're anchored in a good place, that we're at peace with God, and that we do our best with him, for him, and through him each day. For he is the giver of every blessing, the giver and the blessing of Patrick's long life, and the giver of the blessings to him through all those years, which I'm sure he was always most thankful for. So today, as we pay our final farewell, it's a call from his life and his death now in funeral mass, that responsibility of all of us to nurture the faith that he had, to continue to nurture the good things of God. And we know that through the experiences of life and the school of life every day, which we're all part of, that life teaches us most things are transient and passing. We're only pilgrims, companions on a journey. And St. Paul would say there are only three things at last, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. So if we leave a rich legacy of love, and of good deeds, and of faith and prayer, and the lovely memories that Pat leaves to his family, then we leave something very, very precious, something that has investment in heaven before we arrive, something that leaves happy memory, and something that builds bridges of goodwill, harmony, and peace while we're here. If we all can keep it together in that way, then we have done something very noble and beautiful. We have sown seeds that have future promise in the eternal kingdom. And that's the call of Pat's going home to God, of his funeral mass, and of the word of God today, that the good things of God we'd hold on to, sow the seeds of, that there are also future promise in your children's children's life and families. So we pray today that all may be fulfilled for Pat now in the company of the blessed and that his rosary, his prayers, his devotion, the things he held fast to since his baptism in this house of God on the 4th of July 1923, the anniversary of tomorrow, 
all the ways he expressed that devotion in quite humble way, that it is fulfilled and complete from now. And remembering the gospel that I proclaim at this feast for St. Thomas today, you remember that after the resurrection, Thomas wanted certainty that Christ was risen. He wanted to see the wounds in his side and in his hands. He wouldn't take it just on the word of the other disciples. He wanted certainty. And so many people have down through the centuries called him the doubting Thomas. But I would call him the great courageous Thomas because he asked the deeper questions. He searched and he sought a little more. And in doing so, God's wonderful divine revelation was revealed. It wasn't by accident that he returned, that he doubted, and that he touched the wounds of Jesus. That was in the plan of Almighty God, because we'd never had the great proclamation from his lips when he said, my Lord and my God. And we'd never have known the great response of the risen Christ to him, who said, happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Happy are you and I who journey in faith and believe and hope in that way as Pat did. What a wonderful divine revelation and an insight that Thomas brought from the lips of Jesus and that he expressed himself, calling you and I to often say, My Lord and my God, at this Eucharist today before the Blessed Sacrament for Pat, and that Pat has said it now in its fullness when he beholds Jesus, My Lord and my God. And that Christ can say back to Pat, happy and blessed are you and those who have not seen but yet believed. May that faith and hope be fulfilled for him now and be at peace in the company of his dear wife Mary and the deceased of all the Clark family gone home to Almighty God. I mentioned to you at the funeral home what a coincidence that only over a week ago I should come across the billhead for Clark Shamrock House in Patrick Street, among all the receipts left out in the house in Shanikin of the late Kitty Bauer, a most senior parishioner when she died. And her niece handed them to me to look through them, recalling the different places at the main street, like Kevin's and Shorts and Mauer Brothers and Reardon's uh, Medical Hall and so many others that were no longer there today. And among them also, as I said, um, the Clark um, Shamrock House. They couldn't know where that was or who they might be, and then I went to see Jadesca Rowe here in the parish, our local historian, and it was a great love and appreciation for the history of the parish. And then I understand CJ's late father, Christy, was a good companion and friend of Pat's as well, and they knew each other. And he was able to tell me then it was uh, Clark's and where it was, and that Toby wrote him. Boris Ali, who died 20 years ago, whom I knew in the post office in Thurles, and who knew my own late father and family quite well through his years in the post office, and that's who this family was. So what a small world and a coincidence that then, a week later, we should be gathering here now to say farewell to the last member of that family, to Toby's brother, and the link with Patrick Street again, and with the Shamrock House. So a little bit of history there and great social history and all those wonderful um, billheads and receipts that have been left in the our household and to the family of so many places and businesses in Temple Moor that are no longer there now, that served their time so well and that were part and parcel of the life of the people at another generation and another time. So may all those good people and may Pat today rejoice in the companionship and love of St. Thomas on this feast day and with our blessed lady and in the company of all of the good people gone before him to receive welcome reward and hear those words from Jesus, well done, good and faithful servant and the joy and the homeland of your father's house in the eternal kingdom. Eternal rest granted him, O Lord, perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Now we're going to have the prayers of the faithful, and Emma and Grace are going to read our prayers of the faithful if you kindly come forward, and thank you very much. Thank you. We 
pray for the people who cared for Pat, that all of them will be rewarded for their gentleness and care. Lord, hear us. We pray for Pat. May God receive you kindly with generosity, forgiveness, and the rewards of your faith. May you intercede for us and be there at the end to welcome us in our turn into eternal life. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who mourn today, and may their tears be wiped away, and may their mourning be turned to joy. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who have lost loved ones recently. May God comfort, comfort them in their grief and heal the brokenhearted. Lord, hear us. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen and Grace, for giving your prayer so meaningful and so well. And we unite all these prayers with the prayers to our hearts. The prayers say that we can put into words with the God knows better than ourselves. For Pat, for his loved ones today, gather drawn to him fond farewell and final parting. For all who listen and pray with us in the spirit of prayer, friendship and sympathy. That our Blessed Lady may bring all these prayers from Divine Son. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen, and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your great mercy, O Lord, grant to each one of us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace of the last through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we remember all who are sick or infirm in the room, especially Pat's son Jimmy at this time, since his accident in May, to be with him and with all who care for him and attend to him to bring him healing and a blessing in this difficult time and to unite with him in our prayer today for that presence of the Lord to surround him with great healing and blessing to all who attend to him medically, spiritually and pastorally at this time. Lord, hear us. May we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Speak God forever. I, the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbles us to share in the power of Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Set us up as your hands of praise and glory in his name for our good and good of all his church. As we humbly present you, O Lord, the sacrificial offerings and prayers for our brother Pat, we beseech your mercy to him and to all of us that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Saviour may find in him also a merciful judge. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up our hearts. We lift, lift us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, and by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to the earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to glory, to the glory of the resurrection. So with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory as we pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you, comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew fall, that they may become for all of us today the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he went willingly to his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
So I shall stand there for Holy Communion. And if you wish to come to receive, you are very welcome. If you don't wish to receive, come on to receive a blessing. You are welcome to come and just place your hands before you, and I shall give you a blessing.
say to all of us, we remember them. At the rise of the sun and its setting down, we remember them. At the blowing of the wind and the chilling of winter, we remember them. At the opening of the buds and the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and the warmth of the summer. At the rustling of the leaves and the beauty of autumn. At the beginning of the year when it ends, we remember them. As long as we live, for the good they have done, for the wisdom they have shared, for the faith and hope they had, for the stories they told, for the fun and the laughter, for the love they shared, for the suffering they endured, as long as we live, we will always remember them. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, whose Son left us in the sorrow of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Pat, who shared so often at the table of the Lord, may now come to the glory of the eternal life and to be seated at the eternal table of Christ for all eternity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Now we stand for the final commendation and farewell. And I thank you, Pat, his Pat's family, for your courtesy and preparation for the liturgy and all of you who participated in the Mass today, William and Vincent and Mariella, and also um, Grace and Emma, and Jimmy, his grandson, for playing for us and his gift of music, and um, to Pat or Sarson for everything ready for us here, and to Eamon and Thomas, our undertakers of Grace Funeral Home, for their courtesy and help to you and their respect to Pat, and for all the ways they reach out with kindness and understanding at a difficult time for loved ones in the final loss of their, their family member. So we thank them and thank those who listened and prayed with us today for Pat and with you his family and uh, for the privilege to pray and offer his funeral mass here today. Our brother Pat has fallen asleep in Christ, confident our hope of eternal life that has come in today to the loving mercy of our Father let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in the wars of baptism here on the 4th of July 1923 and was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place forever at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may go forth one day to meet our brother, to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. We honour now his mortal remains with the holy water and the incense symbolizing his Christian way of life, symbolizing we belong to God in life and death, and that our prayer will rise at the incense of the throne of God for him today, and that one day we'll arrive there to behold and to meet him, you, his family, in the fullness of God's eternal life one day. Receive his soul and present unto God the Most High. Receive his soul and present unto God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. 
receive his soul and present to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive his soul and present it to God the Most High. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our brother, let perpetual light shine on him forever. Receive his soul and present it to God the Most High. Father, we commend our brother to you today in the sure and certain hope that together with all who died in Christ will rise with him in the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings bestowed upon him in this life and through a long life of gratefulness, they are signs of your goodness and of your fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us today and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help all of us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of Christ until we all meet in Christ and with you and with our brother Pat for them. Pat, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you, take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. And now in peace, let us take our brother Pat to his final resting place, fulfilling his request and wish with his dead parents here in the burial plot here in Temple Wall. So now we gather here in the peace and tranquility of the cemetery in Temple Moor to lay to rest Pat's remains here with his late parents and his uh, uh, brother Toby 
and remembering his dear wife laid to rest in Glasnev and Mary and the deceased of the family. Our brother Pat has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome into the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him this day with our prayers. We pray to the Lord also for ourselves and for you, his dear family, his sons and daughter and grandchildren, as you mourn the loss of your father and grandfather today, that you may be united with him one day, and together that you may meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture, Come whom I, come you whom my Father has blessed, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. O God, by whose mercy the faithfully part to find rest, bless this grave, and send your holy angel to watch over it, as we bury here the body of our, our brother Pat, deliver his soul from every bond of sin, that he may rejoice with you and with your saints forever. Because God has chosen to call our brother from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Dear friends and reverence, let us pray to God, the source of all mercies. You raise the dead to life, give our brother eternal life, Lord have mercy. You console Martha and Mary in their distress, draw near to all who mourn for Pat today, and dry the tears of those who weep, Lord have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our brother, let our faith be our consolation, and eternal life our hope, Lord have mercy. We pray for all laid to rest in this cemetery, and very especially for Pat's dear parents and his brother Toby. Grant to them that their suffering may be lessened, their joy be increased, the light of glory shine on all of them, and may they rest in peace. Lord have mercy. And longing for the coming of the kingdom, we pray as Jesus our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Loving God, from whom all life proceeds, and by whose hand the dead are raised again, though we are sinners, you wish always to hear us. Accept the prayers we have offered in sadness today for your servant Pat. Deliver his soul from death. Number him among your saints. Clothe him with a robe of salvation to enjoy forever the delights of your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Your rose there now, you can put it in the coffin. So we pray, when decade of the rose with the first glorious mystery, the resurrection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetest and our hope. To thee do we cry, for many children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning, weeping, this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, and eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, shown to us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, who made worthy the promises of Christ. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful, you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the prayers of Mary, the Mother of God, who stood by the cross as her son was dying, help all who mourn today for Pat and in the months ahead, and accompany all of us in our own time of need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thanks to Wayne and to Eamon and Tomás for having everything ready for us here at the burial and for Tomás bringing it to the world from the graveside, his burial today for those who may wish to watch and listen and pray or see it at another time. We thank Tomás as well and for also at our Mass today. And thank you, his dearly beloved, of his sons and daughter and grandchildren for your courtesy and reverence and respect for Pat today and in the celebration of his funeral Mass for your participation and every blessing to you all. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.